Mars has captivated the human imagination since the very earliest civilizations. It is the most explored planet in the solar system, and that is unlikely to change. Getting to Mars is relatively easy. Surviving on Mars will be the real challenge. Let's face it, humanity wants and needs to go to Mars, and for several reasons. From climate change to overpopulation, Earth is currently facing some serious threats. Stephen Hawking believed it's time to start looking for a new home for the human race. Sometime in the future, the Earth will be uninhabitable, whether due to climbing temperatures, rising seas, global nuclear war, an inauspiciously precise comet, or the inevitable transformation of our sun into a planet-swallowing red giant. Scientists and aeronautical engineers are already preparing for this cataclysm by building ever larger rockets and setting up simulations of human life on Mars. Organizations such as SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, and Mars One are all in a race to be the first to colonize Mars. NASA intends on sending manned expeditions in the 2030s. SpaceX has an aspirational deadline of reaching Mars by 2025, while Lockheed Martin hopes to establish a base camp in 2028. And outside the U.S., China claims to have developed an M-Drive propulsion system that would send humans to Mars in just weeks. But what will Mars really be like? Nobody knows this for sure, of course, but some facts about the red planet can help predict what Mars will be like and what humans will need to do to survive. So keep watching, but first, be sure to press that subscribe button and turn on the little notification bell so you won't miss any of the interesting videos coming out on Googleplex. Mars was almost identical to Earth roughly 4 billion years ago. Today, it remains the only planet in our solar system that's enough like Earth to even possibly sustain human life. It's half the size of our pale blue dot, but has the same amount of land, which means we'd have a place to settle and flourish. The temperature on Mars is frigid, but its ice means we'd have a water source. The planet's oxidized soil means we could grow food, and the existence of methane gas means we could create fuel. Mars is not a habitable planet for humans at present. It would be far, far easier to live in Antarctica or on the summit of Mount Everest or the heart of the Gobi Desert. With a thin atmosphere made up of almost entirely carbon dioxide, no fresh water, freezing temperatures, and no sign of life, Mars doesn't pose the best environment for human life. However, there are ways to overcome these challenges. We now know that Mars was once covered in rivers, lakes, and oceans, much like Earth. It is estimated that if Mars were smooth and all its ice and permafrost melted into liquid water, the entire planet would be covered with an ocean over 100 meters deep. And it goes without saying that water is damn handy. Mars is rich in elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen. This is key as it means that we'll have more luck growing plants. While Mars' atmosphere is relatively thin, it is thick enough to protect crops on the surface from solar flares. Similar to the Earth's atmosphere, it is believed we will be able to create a greenhouse effect that would simultaneously heat the planet and thicken the atmosphere. In a 2015 interview on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Elon Musk said that there are two ways that we could trigger a greenhouse effect, the slow way and the fast way. The slow way is to release greenhouse gases into Mars' atmosphere in order to warm it up. The fast way is to drop thermonuclear bombs on Mars' polar ice caps. In 2006, NASA funded a study which explored the possibility of using giant mirrors in Mars' orbit to give the planet extra warmth. The result would be not unlike what Musk calls the slow way, gradually heating the planet and triggering a greenhouse effect. Terraforming would take lots of time, so the first colonizers of Mars would need something else to protect themselves from radiation and provide the amount of atmospheric pressure closer to Earth's. Engineers at MIT have designed a stretchy, skin-tight spacesuit for Mars exploration that is lined with tiny muscle-like coils that apply pressure to the body that's missing from the atmosphere. Mars and Earth are in what's known as the Goldilocks Zone 
the region of a solar system that is neither too cold nor too hot to support life. However, the average temperature on Mars is about negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Humans will have to build and live in climate-controlled synthetic bubbles if they're going to survive on Mars. Gravity might be a bit of a problem too. Gravity on Mars is 375 thousandths of that on Earth and we still aren't totally sure how that will affect our bodies. Studies of astronauts seem to suggest that lower gravity won't be very good for our muscles, bones and organs. Our bodies have evolved to live with Earth's gravity, so perhaps adding artificial gravity to Mars will be the solution. If getting to Mars is the biggest hope for saving human civilization, then our next step is to create the technology to do it. But for all that technical know-how, once we get to Mars, the tricky part is to keep people alive. And that's going to take a lot of work because right now, Mars is a wasteland. In order to survive the lack of air pressure and the cold, humans will need pressurized and heated habitats. Martians, the terrestrial kind, will also need a spacesuit whenever they go outside. Every hour they spend outside will add to their radiation exposure, not to mention all the complications that exposure to radiation brings. Once humans do make it to Mars, a major challenge for any colony will be to generate a stable supply of food. The enormous costs of launching and resupplying resources from Earth will make that impractical. To thrive on Mars, the brave adventurers may want to change themselves or possibly their offspring. This could lead to genetic engineering to help future generations adapt to the low gravity, higher radiation and lower air pressure. And why stop at humans? Human colonists could also adapt their plants and animals to live there as well. Mars is beautiful after a fashion. It looks like a nice desert planet with winds, clouds and ancient riverbeds. But maybe, just maybe, the best reason to go there is because it's hard. There's something to be said about setting a goal and achieving it, especially when it requires so much hard work and sacrifice. Mars is hopefully just our first step into the universe. Only time will tell how the first humans on Mars will actually live, a time that may be here sooner than we think. So do you want to live on Mars someday? Comment below. Be sure to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to Googleplex.